Hello everybody, Math Hobo here, and today we are going to be talking about Dirichlet convolutions. So, what is this fancy phrase that I've written upon the board? Well, um, it's a simple, uh, well, it's not simple, but it is an operation that we will uh, apply to uh, functions, to two functions, and we will get a third function in return. So, so uh, let's, let's see how this works. So let's say that f and g are both arithmetic functions. Then we have f convolute g, or f star g, which is, uh, the, this is the Dirichlet convolution. So, so f convoluted with g is defined to be the sum over d divides n of f of d times g of n over d. And you might be saying, well, this is just a lot of mathematical mumbo jumbo, but what does it really mean? What, what is the intuition behind this? And well, how do I parse through the symbols? Well, a, a, a simpler way, uh, perhaps a more intuitive way of writing this expression would be um, this is equal to the sum over a times b is equal to n of f of a times g of b. And well, let's let's see what this is saying. So given some n, and, and remember this this entire thing, this f star g, what is that? That's that's a new function. Remember when I when I said that the Dirichlet convolution is an operation that takes two functions and spits out another function. Well, that function is going to be a function of n. So so in reality, it will be written as f star g of n. And often this is in parentheses as well, because then it looks like f star g of n. But uh, yes, that's, that's aside from the point. Anyways, so now this is a function of n. And uh, this here is also a function of n, because we're, we have our input n. And we're saying for, let's, let's take varying combinations of a and b, such that a times b is equal to n. And let's take the sum over each of those combinations, having uh, uh, the, the, the each recurring term be uh, f of a times g of b. So uh, let's, let's actually uh, think about an example here. Let's say So let's say that um, f of n is equal to I don't know, something like, simple, like 3n, and g of n is equal to something simple like uh, 2n. Then f star g of uh, n, well, let's, let's say f star g of 4, or, or let's say, yeah, f star g of 4, is equal to the sum over d divides 4 of f of g, well, f of d times g of n, well, n is equal to 4, so 4 over d. And, well, let's, let's see. Now, this is simply equivalent to, this becomes uh, sigma over d divides 4. Uh, f is simply, let's recall, f was equal to 3n, and g was equal to 2n. So two, 3 times d times uh, g of 4 over d. So that's 2 times 4 over d. That's 8 over d. So this d and d, uh, well, no, yeah, so this d and d cancel out. And these uh, simple arithmetic functions, just it's just sum over d divides 4 of 3 times 8. And 3 times 8, um, well, let me write this again here. So 
So 3 times 8 is simply 24. So we have sum over d divides 4. And how many divisors are there of 4? Um, well, there's 1, there's 2, and there's 4. So there's 3 divisors. So we have sigma over 3 elements of uh, 24. So that's just equal to 24 times 3. So we have successfully computed a numerical approach. Well, not a numerical approach, but a numerical problem involving a Dirichlet convolution. But there are some other interesting properties of Dirichlet convolutions that we'll need to know in order to be proficient in this, uh, in this area. So uh, one interesting uh, fact about Dirichlet convolutions is that they are commutative. So they are commutative. They are commutative. And what does this mean? That means that f convoluted with g is equal to g convoluted with f. And uh, you, you might ask, well, when is this not true for uh, a certain operation? Well, it's certainly not true for matrix multiplication. Uh, we know that uh, matrix A times matrix B, most certainly, well, in, in special cases, in certain cases, it does uh, equal uh, matrix B times matrix A, but in most cases, it does not. And, it, and that, so that's an example of where an operation is not commutative. But we do know that Dirichlet convolutions most certainly are com uh, commutative. And so that's one, we have commutativity. So let me write that up here. So we have commutativity. And another interesting property that we have is associativity. Ah. Yes, so we have associativity. What does this mean? It means that f star uh, g star h, in parentheses, is equal to f star g, in parentheses, uh, star h. So this is another property that holds, which is another one of the group properties, which uh, is found in group theory textbooks. So we also have associativity. And another property that we have is the identity property, that, that um, f star b identity function, which is one of the arithmetic functions that we listed, I believe in arithmetic functions part one. Uh, so, so f star i, f or, or f convolute identity, is simply equal to f. And in fact, we can, we can even verify this. So, so let's do that right now. Let's remember how um, i was defined. So i of n is simply equal to 1 if n is equal to 1 and 0 if otherwise or if else. So let's see what f convoluted with i gives us. So f convoluted with i gives us the sum over d divides n of, um, of, of f of uh, d times i of n over d. And let's ask ourselves, well, what is i of n over d? Well, only when d, uh, only when d is equal to n, which is uh, one case, uh, i will equal 1. And everywhere else, i will equal 0. So this product equals 0 um, uh, more than it equals 1. And, and it only equals 1 in the case that d is equal to n. So this is the only significant case which we must consider. So uh, let's, let's scrap this sum because all other terms sum to, uh, sum to 0. And so let's consider the case where d is equal to n. So if d is equal to n, then we get n over n is equal to 1. And uh, this just becomes f of n. So then we get f of n times i of 1. And what is i of 1? Uh, i of n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 1. So this is equal to 1. And then, so that's just 1 times f of n. So now we have successfully proved that f convolute i is equal to f. That's wonderful. Uh, yes.
So that, what we just proved, was the identity property. And what comes next? We also have um, distributivity. So So the Dirichlet convolution also distributes over functions. And uh, well, you might ask, what does this mean? We have additive distributivity, which means that f plus g convoluted with another function h is equal to, uh, well, f of h times g of h. You just FOIL it. So f convoluted with h uh, plus g convoluted with h. Wonderful. So, so this is another property which holds true. And, well, that, as to our last property, so we maintain distributivity. And, well, these, over the, um, over the operations of additivity and the Dirichlet convolution, form a ring. And uh, if you were not familiar with what a ring is, you can brush up on your abstract algebra or your group theory. But this forms a ring under the operations of uh, addition and uh, Dirichlet convolutions. So this concludes the uh, first segment on Dirichlet convolutions. Thank you very much.